Right here, we do these once a week. We bar bake them, wrap them, and then freeze them. So for this, we do 75% hydration. We use a different flour. We're using uh, ABC from Central Milling. Um, we are using sourdough, but then also a little commercial yeast. So we'll mix the dough. Throw it in the walk-in. We use really cold water because it's a long mix. It's almost a 20-minute uh, mix. We mix the dough. We throw it in the walk-in. We do a couple stretching folds. Bulk it overnight. We pull it in the morning at 7 a.m. Then from there, we, we paint, throw it in the pans. We do 350 grams, tablespoon of olive oil. Um, let them sit from 7.30 until 10 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, we do our first panning, cover them back up. Then at one o'clock, we push it out one last time, and then we start the par bags. Um, How long's the bake? The par bake is seven minutes right now. And we use our um, old Capone oven, and we go 550. 550 for seven minutes. Um, yeah, and then we just let them cool down and we wrap them up. They come out really nice, great flavor, a little bit sour, nice fluff. Um, yeah, we serve these as a special on Thursdays. Why only on Thursdays? Well, first thing is that we're not really set up for Detroit pizza all week. It would be a lot. We would need a lot more pans and we would have... This process here is like a seven hour process from when we pull the dough, the panning, the baking, the wrapping. So it, we're just not really set up for it. And then the other reason is, is that it gives our local community something different, right? We are, we're a neighborhood spot. We're not so much of a destination that people are only gonna come one time. So people in the neighborhood who wanna eat something different they know on Thursday, they could get a square. Tuesday, they could get a burger. And then Wednesday, we do sandwiches. So we keep it fresh and fun for all of our locals and our community. And um, yeah, we used to do it on Mondays. Now we're closed on Monday. So we do it on Thursday. What's up with the three ovens? All right. So this, we use Capone's. I had one more of these. Same exact oven right here. So we had four dents. This oven goes a little too deep and you can't access some of the pizzas back there. It's really tough. So you could really only do three small at a time or maybe three large because it's so deep back there. It's got a short mouth. And the one oven we had was our original oven. So we were almost we were going over 10 years right now. So we thought it was time to replace it. So we got the 933 from Pizza Master, which could fit um, three 18 inch pies across and uh, two deep. You really don't use it like that. You more of do like a V, like one, 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 and then you do re the reverse V. But this thing's a beast. This thing's still working great. And then I scored the Baker's Pride from a friend. The restaurant was closing. I got it for a great price, and I had a six burner range with the oven below there, but we weren't using it. We're not making pastas or anything like that. So I took the range out, plopped this thing in, and we only turn it on on Thursdays when we do the Detroits. So all the Detroits are done here. And this is the Detroit line, the sandwich line, or the burger line. So everything will come off of here during those special days. It wouldn't really be possible to run burgers, sandwiches, and squares because we just, this line is switched out for each day of the specials. One second. Do you get to track if your locals are coming back for these specials? Like it's, I think that's such an interesting concept to me. Yeah, 
definitely. We'll see people. So, like, we'll come in three days a week. I want a burger today. I want a sandwich. Maybe I want a traditional. Or I want a burger, a square, and then a traditional. So, it's something for our community um, to change it up for them a little bit. Um, and it makes it fun for our team also. It switches it up for the team. And I won't put them in that situation where we would expect them to do all three of these specials in one day. And I think it waters it down a little bit. It makes it a little more special. And what we can also do is keep our focus on one thing to be the best, right? Like if burgers is only special of the day, we're gonna make the best burgers possible because that's all we have to do. Um, so we can really stay focused on each day. If we were making the dough every day, we're painting it, you know, every day it, as much as I would like to think it wouldn't, it's going, it's not, it's going to suffer a little bit because we're trying to do it during service. We're doing this whole panning and baking on the day we're closed on Monday. So all of our attention could be directly on, all right, where's the dough at? Is it at a peak time? If you're trying to do that during service, you know, or you have to have a person dedicated just towards that, you know, it makes it a little more difficult, you know, to run service and then, oh man, half an hour, you know, if it's a really hot day, the dough could, you know, overproof or, you know, if it's taking a little too long and we have to bake pizzas during the rush, it just gets a little messy. So we're not set up for it. And, um, we like to keep it for the locals and all of our community um, to keep it a little fun and fresh. What's a what's a good price for a baker's pride? Tell me. What's a good price or what I pay? What'd you pay? I paid five grand. How uh, around how many do you do a day? Um, on a good day, we'll do a uh, hundred squares. Hundred squares on a good day. On a slower day, maybe 60, 65. Okay. What are, so basically when, when you do squares, it's whatever's on your menu can go onto a square? No. So we've built our own square menu, which is not the whole, um, which is not the whole menu. Why I did that is because before we didn't have this dedicated line, we were going off of that line, and it was just going to be too much with trying to do the whole menu on both the rounds and the squares. So we only had five pizzas recently. We just added another three. So we filled it out a little bit. Um, we were getting a lot of requests from guests. Hey, we want the hot nut and we want the loading dog. All right, so we gave you know, the most requested pizzas from the guests, we put those on the menu and then we created a few other ones to be squares also. So now it's it's a nice it's a nice variety now. Can I see these getting loaded in real quick? Yeah, yeah. Make sure so I'm not even inside. So he uses that pan so it's hitting the same spot every time. So oh. it doesn't get overbaked, you know. If, you push it too far back, maybe it's only cooking half of the pizza at the new temperature, and they might burn. Wait, explain that to me again? So we do that so it's, you know, eight inches in every time. Because oh. if you have someone just eyeing it, they might put like if a 10 inch gap, so then the back half of the pizza will be baking at a hotter temperature. Because it's hotter in the back? Yeah, and it just hasn't been cooked on yet. Do you uh, rotate them once they're in or they, you just pull them straight out? We just pull them straight out. Yeah, there's no need to flip. So uh, if you wanna shoot Louise taking some out? Yeah, right? deep panning, that'd be great. Yeah. So this is what we're looking for. Not fully baked, but it's basically there. Flip in the bottom, you want gold. And it will get darker on the second bake. But this is basically what we're looking for every time. Wow, these are pretty. Yeah. I like the color.
Central Milling, you said? Yeah, the Artisan Baker's Craft uh, Malted Organic. 50 bucks a bag. Gosh, organic flour is not cheap. No, no, but um, something we believe in and we think it's worth it. So we use that for the squares and use the double O for your rounds? For the rounds. Do you, um, what's the hydration on these? These are 75. Oh. And our rounds are 65. And then any oil inside? Yeah, these are 6%. 6% oil? Yeah. And 75% water? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, do you use Corto in your? Yeah, we use Corto. Yeah, my quality really, you know, I would never do anything else. That's my, that's my jam. That's an expensive pizza, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, dude, that's, these are solid. 60 to 100 a day. And then how much are they? Uh, On average? 30. 30 bucks? 30, Sorry. After everything, uh, tax. 30 bucks. Of 30 bucks. Um, I think a margarita is menu price uh, 22, maybe 24. What's your most popular? Duck. What's in that? Uh, that's gonna be tomato sauce, uh, raw garlic, thyme, and then mozzarella, mushrooms, sausage, super sauce. It's our number one selling round and our number one selling square. Why do you think that is? We're in America. We like beef. That's uh, it's like the combo. You know, it's like your classic combo. Because, you know, we do have a supreme pizza with the green bell peppers, the olives, and red onion, but it just really works. And the meat and the mushroom and the thyme and the garlic, it's just an amazing combination. Is it more popular than pepperoni? Yes. Yes. Wow. It goes, pep it goes loading dock, and then it goes um, our hot and honey pizza. Oh, wow. Which is like our take on a margarita with copa, and then we finish with honey and calabrian chili things. So that's actually the second most popular now. We just added that three, three years ago, four years ago, and um, I looked at the sales, and it's it's number two. And that that's, pepperoni. That's interesting. Yeah, and that margarita. Yeah. yeah. Those huh. are our top four. Cool. That's super interesting. Where do you, are you storing these, like, uh, air temp, are you wrapping them? Yeah, we're gonna wrap them. Um, we're just still doing the bake. We want them to cool. Yeah. We wanna get them cooled down for, you know, at least an hour. Are you, so once they're cooled uh, and then wrapped, are you refrigerating them? Oh my we're God. freezing them. Freezing them? Yeah. Do you find that there's uh, shrinkage or no, because it's uh, 350 grams? No, we're not getting any. No, right? No, okay, I didn't think right. so. These are, these are pretty. Cool. These are your pans. How, what are your uh, best tips for pan maintenance? Funny you should ask. We weren't doing it correctly for some time. Uh -huh. We were sitting there like chiseling out pizzas. And yeah. we're like, what the hell? Um, and then we like followed our steps back and now just warm water with a soft scrubber. Nothing that's going to scratch it or take anything away from it. Um, just warm water and a, a nice scrub. And now they come out so damn easy. Ooh, it was so bad. It was like, I, I like dreaded getting the pizza out of the pan. We rub the sides um, with olive oil and uh, nothing on the bottom of the bake. You don't use Crisco for the final bake? For the final bake, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Crisco, I saw the Crisco up there. That's yeah, fine. Crisco on the sides for the final bake, no olive oil on the bottom. Um, you said no olive oil on the bottom? Or? No olive oil on the bottom. We get a crispier crust. Gotcha. Speaking of olive oil, here's a message from our sponsor, Cordo Olive Oil. What oil do you use to press out your dough? I found out that whatever fat you use greatly affects your pizza. And that's why the only brand that I trust with my pizza is Cordo Olive Oil. Taste is everything and other brands 
pale in comparison. Do you want to taste the difference? Learn more about Cordo Olive Oil using the link in the description below. If you're an operator, you can get a free tasting. Just message me and I'll connect you with them. Thanks to Cordo for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the episode. And then, <clears throat> when we do the second bait, it's nine minutes. Nine minutes, second bait. But if we got a lot of pizzas in the oven, it's really until all the cheese bubbles, not just, you know, some of it. It could go up to 11 minutes, depending on. So that's why it's really important when we're using the oven, the baker's pride, we load, you know, at least like three or four pizzas in at a time and just let them bake through. We're not opening um, during the bake. We will take a deck from the Capone and turn that on also. So that gives us another five. So we could do four on the top, four on the bottom, and five at the bottom of the Capone. So looking at 13 pizzas at a time. Do you uh, find that the bakes are pretty consistent with having three different ovens? Yeah, yeah. So the bottom of the baker's pride, you have to set um, 25 degrees warmer than the one on the top. Which makes sense because he fries it, right? So we have a gun too. So, you know, I always tell the team, shoot the floor, see where it's at. You know, I always tell them, all right, if we're cooking in the back, cook in the back. Cook four back there, you cook four in the front, let the back uh, stone heat up, and we just go back and forth with each one. You could technically cook eight pies per deck, but you would need to let it, you know, maybe get like four minutes to reheat up. And then the ones in the back are gonna cook a little faster, so then you're pulling the front to access the back. So what I tell them, just go four in the back, and then the next load, go in the front. That's what you meant earlier by the alternating V, right? You'll go one in the front, one in the back, one in the front, and then you'll switch it around, one in the back, one in the front, one in the back. Exactly. That's smart, tight, cool. Yeah. Can we make one? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. Can you make a square for me? All right, see all the ingredients. You said how long was the bake for pars? Seven. Seven, and then nine on total? Yeah. Why sourdough? Flavor, it's what I grew up on, you know, being from the Bay Area. Um, I was eating like sourdough loaves, you know, go out to a Italian restaurant, they got some Bodine loaf or Raymond's loaf, and I just remember growing up eating sourdough bread, so it's just like, so vivid in my mind, you know, just crusty, just munching on <laughs> like the end of it, you know, picking up a sourdough loaf and like begging my parents just to rip me off. Um, like at the end, you know, like I can't wait till I get home. So it has like a nostalgia thing for me. It's like what I grew up eating and it's a flavor thing for me is that it's not for everyone and I don't believe in uh, like some super acidic stuff, but it's just like, it's my childhood for me. I think it adds a lot of flavor, you know, the whole grains too. It's like an extra depth, so that's why we do it. I definitely agree about the flavor part for sure. Yeah. It's so flavorful. And having grown up in California, we're so used to it, you know? It, it was around everywhere, so I totally get that. It's just harder to, it's like one extra step, harder to manage. Yeah, it, it is, but once you build the system, it can be, it's forgiving. You just gotta build your system and your timing, and your feeding schedule, your baking schedule. I wouldn't even say it's much different than using, I mean, it's a pre-ferment, right? At the end of the day. Yeah, it's a starter, so. You know, it's just about managing it and training your team on why things are reacting to other things. 
But once you get that down, man, it's it can be intimidating, but once you learn it, it's not too bad. Alright, so we make like Whoa. I call these family feeders. These are have a Sicilian style pizzas. Uh-huh. Um, because I don't have enough pans to do the whole batch. We have about 105 pans. Um, Those are 12 by 12s? 14 by 14. 14 by 14. Yeah, so Gosh. that's why we call them the family feeders. We usually just keep them for like our team. Yeah. Uh, if I know a regular or someone who wants to try something different, I thought about selling them. I just, you know, it would be a $50 pizza. Yeah, it's and expensive. I, I don't know. You know, we'll test it out. They're really good though. So when we do those, we, uh, you want to shoot him? Uh, oh, let's go. Yeah. Talk, yeah, let's talking about when you do those, what? We do the mozzarella sliced. Oh yeah. Sliced Traditional. Yeah. Down. I saw him cutting the middle. What was that? So we pre-cut the pizza oh. before. So when we just pop it out of the oven, it's good to go. There's no more to do. What? It's done. Why do you do it that way? Uh, the, the, honestly, Pizza Hacker did it because he was doing Detroit's before me. And I, he, I forget his logic. Probably it saves a step after. Crushing the crown a little bit when you slice it. Yeah. It might kind of bring things down a little bit. Mess with the crumb a little bit. What the it. hell? I've never seen that before. Yeah, mess with the crown. Um, that's pizza hacker, dude. That guy, he hacks things. He just tries new weird stuff, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So, but you don't do that on rounds, right? No. Nah, Clearly, because yeah. you wouldn't be able to. Yeah. You would, you, <laughs> that don't work. Can you make that uh, pepperoni, please, Claudia? Um, okay. And then cheese blend. What are you using? So we're using shredded grande and um, shredded Tillamook cheddar. Oh. So we do a blend of that, hit it around the edges. Um, we make a different sauce for the Detroit's. It's actually our meatball sauce. Okay. A little sweeter. It's got some garlic, um, other herbs and stuff, but it's definitely on the chunkier and sweeter side. We go pre-bake on it, not post-bake. Post-bake is great, but I think it be almost becomes such a tomato-forward pizza, whereas when we do it this way, everything's kind of coming together a little more, and it's not so tomato-forward. So given the choice, what are you baking it in? I'd bake it the Baker's Pride, but it's not on right now. <laughs> yeah, the Capone is occupied, so we are going Pizza Master. Thank you. Why 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 did you choose the Baker's Pride? Why did, why why did would I you choose to bake in it? Yeah. Let me switch you. It's something about that deep heat, man. It's like that, that what? That old school deep propane heat. Yeah? Uh, I, I, I like it. I mean, is there a huge difference? No, it's almost the exact same. But I think it's just like this deepness. Man, those stones are just freaking thick. And uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with old school Baker's Pride Up. That's super interesting. Yeah. That's so funny. The problem is with that our traditional pizza, it's cooked at like 675. Can't do it on Baker's Pride. You just can't do it. And it doesn't have the recovery time. Right. And um, you also couldn't par bake those in the Baker's Pride because you wouldn't get that same color. Not really. No, right? That's no. There, There's no top heat element on that. No, it wouldn't. It doesn't get exactly what we want. Yeah. Um, but. Oh, could you? Am I wrong? Like. You could in the beginning. It just doesn't pre-bake up when we've tried. Mm -hmm. 
the same way. I see. We get the oven spring, um, and we can just cook a lot more in here. Because we just have more decks. You know, if that was to its right temp, that would be fine, but we'd have to wait longer. We can't fit as many across. It's just way more efficient to use all these other decks that we have. But yeah, we, the Capone just really works really well. Um, when we were talking on the podcast, you said you've been opening up the space a bit, little by little. And this was uh, generation two, this area right here. In front of that wall is generation one. This is generation four. Yeah, so we went through this wall. We bought another walk-in. So we have our original walk-in here. Second walk in here. We put our dough production all back here. And then we're able to create a nice team area. Break room and have our office. Yeah. So this was another thousand square feet we took at the uh, end of 2019. So basically during COVID, we did this whole construction project. We finished it and uh, indoor dining still wasn't open yet, but it was nice just to do all that construction then and have it ready for when it did open up. I think it's super cool to see like this industrial vibe because it really shows you that a walk-in is something that is, I don't know, that you build is like almost modular in a way, yeah. right? Um, it's not a room. It's like a box more like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we it's just cool. got our delivery today. I don't know if this is useful, but you know. Let's go. Um, oh man. So, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. This so, is pretty. Everything dated. Everything organized. organized. First in, first out. That's how a walk in should be clean and smelling good. Nothing on the floors. Yep. Yep. So now we're at 4.0 and now we are done. <laughs> 5.0 TBD. I'm no, just kidding. We'll see. Never know. <laughs> yeah, the Pizza Master has really been awesome. Uh, we used to, we could basically do on these three decks what we used to do on the four Capone decks. The only problem is the height is what it is. But we use the third deck one, you know, unless we absolutely have to. It's hard um, to bend down there, huh? Huh? It's hard to bend down there? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you got... I'm going to make an Instagram reel. <laughs> Explaining the different ways people work that third deck. So, I'll tease that now, but... Cool. Everyone has their own way, and it's funny to see You'll probably post it before I get this video out. So we'll try to maybe screen, like include it in the video. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Huh, that's super interesting. Do they make them taller or can you get like higher stands for them? I'm no, it, it, but then the problem is this becomes too high. Some places put four and that last one is basically on the floor. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. And you would only do that if you were to, I think, just have pans down there. So if you had all your square pan pizza down there that don't have to even be watched or accessed very much, what are you talking about? Like, like yeah. That, you know? There's a benefit space-wise to make them taller, but there's the downside of reach. Whereas if you were to make them wider and make them like a... I don't know, like a 952 or a 961, something like that. It would be wide and shorter, but then it would take up more room, right? Yeah. yeah. And you got to. Hopefully, got I got so the space, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So right. You, you gotta right. Make efficient use yeah, you're right. Of it. But I think the pony might have taken it to the extreme. Or they went too far back. Oh, gotcha. Because it's deeper. Yee. I mean, it's 
if you're looking at this. Oh yeah, that's a good, Ooh, like, good point of reference. You're like trying to get stuff and yeah. you're like, how do you hop over a pizza? Right. How about so, stick it in there and we'll see how far it goes deep. Oh yeah. So it's not nearly as deep. And you could, you know, you could slide over a little bit more. Yeah. It's much more easy to access. I'm learning that skill now on the Coda 2 Max, have, being able to cook like two to three pizzas at a time. And it is a skill, right? Uh, to be able to maneuver all of that. It's hard. So you could cook two pizzas in one oven? 12 inch, at least uh, two 12 inchers. Uh, or you could do like three tens. You could even do like six eights if you wanted. Uh, can you transport that oven? No. That's Not by yourself. Well, you could. Sorry. Let me take that back. You could use straps. But for me to get my arms around it with the stones, I could not. Um, if I take the stones out, I could. But I don't like to take the t stones out because that's one more point of failure for you. Imagine game day, you take the stones out, boom, you're donezo uh, if it falls and cracks. So I try to leave everything intact. So with that, I mentioned Pizza Hacker again. So my oven, I have a black stone, right? I'm not saying it's the same as yours, but he said you got to take the stones out because if you hit the wrong bump uh -huh. on the road, sure, it might crack your stone. Interesting. I don't know how those are built, but kind of for the black stone, that kind of bounces around a lot. He's like, dude, you got to take the stones out, man. You hit the wrong bump, it's going to crack your stone. So I don't know if that would apply to uh, yours. I don't know how it's built. No, you know what? There's validity to that, I would say. Yeah, I think there is. Because I did hit a bump one time, and I heard my my oven jump, and I was like, I hope I didn't crack my stone. So I think you're right. If you wrap it, you know, if you had a bin, and you wrap it with, like, a moving blanket, and you had your two stones, or however many stones there are, that is... I'd rather have that than in my oven. But do you trust yourself or your team to not drop the stone when they're taking it out? Yeah. Right, is that kind of the... Uh... Yeah. I'm wondering if it makes more sense to put a towel underneath the stone and just... You know how you could easily lift the stone up and slide some padding there? I think that might be better. Because you, at the end of the day, you need a place for the stone. Okay, so... I was talking, the middle cheese isn't done enough yet. So ah. this pie isn't done yet. While that pie is baking, here's a message from one of our sponsors, Boccio Cheese. Do you need some amazing cheese for your pizza business? Well, Boccio's got you. With Boccio, not only will you get quality cheese, but you also get cash back through their Gold Rewards Club program. For every pound of Boccio cheese that you purchase, you'll earn cash back rewards. That sounds amazing because I'm all about quality. I'm all about a great deal. Use the link in the show notes to learn more and sign up for a demo today. Thank you to Bacho Cheese for sponsoring this episode. Now back to the podcast. That's uh, That was one of the hard things about pizza that I had to learn is that it's not always gonna be the same. You know, and like nine minutes today is not nine minutes tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so what I do, and you can see here, this is something we have for our team. It's like there's ranges and scales, right? And this is what we're looking for. Someone wants it well done, burnt, don't send it. That side is okay, but that's not, you know, a regular light bake. So there's always like a range of... Um, like what's acceptable, you know? This is what we're shooting for every day. But, you know, when you're using sourdough and you're using other things, it's not just, um, it's not gonna be the same. Yeah. So, hmm. you have I like have that. an acceptable range, but there has to be someone who's in the kitchen and everyone knows what is not acceptable. And it's like, no, this has to be refired. And our range might be like, if five is what we're shooting for, 
we only accept 5.5 and 4.5. Like it's super tight. Too much sauce. When I move a pizza, I shake it when it comes out. Nothing should be jiggling around. I should be able to have a pizza come out, a cheese pizza at least, and it can do it with other ones. Cheese pizza comes out, I lift it up, nothing falls. It just stays. That's a test. Another test we have is I cut a pizza here and then I separate the slices. Nothing should be falling into the cracks between the slices. That means we topped it too heavy. Nothing should slide. It should all, I should be able to break all the slices away from each other and no cheese, no sauce, no ingredients bleed onto the um, tray. What? we topped it correctly. All right, moment of truth when we pull this out, I'm gonna make you do it. You know <laughs> well, that, right? That's for the round traditional. Oh, okay. That's for the traditional. Uh, square, those are, are heavy like pizzas. Heavily topped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah you yeah. kind of want some heavy topping. And uh, <laughs> you were sort of talking about it earlier on the podcast, which everyone should go check out. Um, it's going to be available on YouTube, Spotify. Uh, but when you, the people who are checking, that's your expo people or your SUS, and those are more of a leadership position, yeah. would you say? Yeah, yeah. So our kitchen lead, our SUS, work expo. Um, they're the last line. They know how it's supposed to be. I mean, we all know how it's supposed to be, but they're the ones responsible for sending pizzas out and refiring pizzas. Um, they're in charge. They're the boss. So when Expo tells you to refire, you refire. That's what it is. Ooh. And pecorino. Ooh. It's already pretty salty with all the pepperoni, but a little extra. Yeah, dude, I've been, you know what's funny? I've been contemplating whether I want to add pecorino to my pepperoni pizzas anymore. I had one the other day, my own. I was like, oh, fuck. It's salty. It's salty. I can't say it. Like, I used to only do it that way. Because pepperino just gives it that nice taste. Is this a uh, grande pecorino? Or does grande make pecorino? Uh, no, it's not. It's some Italian stuff. Gotcha. Wow. So, it's holding right now. Should I spin it? Yeah. Turn it around, yeah. That'd be great. Beautiful. All right, show me the money. Does it pull out? Oh yeah, man, it's already sliced. Doesn't even have to slice it. Let me see. You want like a crumb shot or something? Uh, actually, let me get the booty first. Can you spin it one more time for me? Thanks. Oh wow, that is even. Yeah, show me what you're gonna show me. Bottom? Bottom, yeah. So this would be a little lighter than what we're uh, uh, if one more time? during service because we've been cooking all the shells on it. Because um, I just baked on a stone that just went through, you know, cooking 50. So yeah. it would be a little darker during service. My goodness. That was interesting, dude. You pulled it up and it was already cut. That's I've never <laughs> seen that. So you want me to pull them apart? Yeah. Alright. Look at that. No knife work. I have not cut this video. Wow. So do you how do you how do you cut it then? Because well you just cut the dough, but then the cheese kind of brings it all together then, right? Yeah. Yeah. And some people would be like, oh my pizza is in uh 
the pizza isn't cut. Um, it's like, yeah, it is. It just, you can't really see it. But, you know, ingredients falling on for a square is like, hell yeah, man. You know, this, no problem with that. This is beautiful. And then, yeah, it should be pretty crunchy. Huge flavor. Pretty light, so. It's our Detroit. Pretty, man. No real crumb action going on right now because uh, cheese is over it, but it's nice. I like the bottoms. You yeah, said a you. Bottom like that is kind of what we're looking for. Yeah. Show me the other one that you didn't like. That one looked all right. So I'd say that's more what we're looking for compared to that. Something a little more golden. Mm. That's a little, you know, just not Wand. quite where we want. Yeah. And same here. Yeah. So it seems to be a little more towards the middle. We're kind of going more for that. But, you know, like I said, we had just cooked all of our pre baked So cool. I waited a little longer when it came out for more of that golden. Awesome. Yeah, man, that's our uh, Detroit inspired pizza because heaven forbid that I say Detroit style. And then the guy from Detroit says, this ain't Detroit style. So, hell no, I would never say New York style, because our pizza isn't New York style. But I wouldn't even imagine what would happen if I said our pizza was New York style. Detroit and inspired. Detroit inspired, then our rounds are just long bridge. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, man. Final words. Final words, man. Uh, I'm really happy to have you in here, man. We should probably do this again. I'm working on some tavern style. We've done them here before. Um, we did years ago, like five years ago, at some pop-ups. Now we're thinking about bringing it in a weekly special. It would most likely be on Saturday. So on football weekend, this season coming up, hopefully Saturday you could get taverns. And then Sunday we're bringing back wings and maybe a spaghetti dinner. Don't hold me to any of that stuff. That's what we're thinking about. But that's the way you do community right there. And like really building something for the neighborhood. That's right, man. We got to keep it fun, keep it fresh, keep up the vibes. Well, there you have it. My conversation with Neil from Longbridge Pizza. Neil, thank you so, so much for inviting us into your kitchen and showing us the ropes when it comes to Detroit South Pizza. I'm a fan of what you're doing. I love what you're doing for the community. Keep on rocking, brother. And thank you so, so much for always giving me some love. And thank you so, so much for always being there for me. I truly appreciate everything you do. To you, the listener, please do me this one quick favor and let Neil know what's good dough. His information will be in the show notes at Longbridge Pizza. Let him know what's good dough. Please, please, please. I know you love this episode. While you're on Instagram, message me at what's good dough and let me know your thoughts. You can also email me, I drift at whatsgooddo.com or leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube or Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to the show if you're not already doing so. And make sure to send this to a friend. I love you. Till next time. Peace. Do you want to get started in your pizza business? Well, the way I got started was by cooking pizza in my uni oven and selling those pizzas. Now with the uni Coda 2 Max, you have enough oven space to make one super big pizza or you can make two at a time I've even made six at a time so that you can truly crank out pizzas, especially when you are in production mode. So if you're looking to start your pizza business and want to buy an uni oven, use the link in the show notes. It'll greatly appreciate the show and send me your receipt. If you use my affiliate link, I'm going to enter you in a chance to win a $250 uni gift card. That way you can stretch your dollar further and keep on building your business. You can email me your receipt, idrift at whatsgooddo.com or DM me on Instagram at whatsgooddo. But make sure to use that affiliate link.